This week, we are in the studio working on a small lighting project where we're going to turn this into this. So we're going to jump back a couple days where I was in the workshop bending a couple brackets to start this project off. Brackets are made out of eighth inch aluminum 5052 so that they are more kind to bending. And I bent one of them first to make sure that they bent correctly. And then I bent three of them to knock them all out at once. And the idea of the two screws at the top are so that when I mount them up here to hold the crossbar that goes across the room, I can drill directly into the stud or the top plate that's supposed to be on these bulkheads and on the walls. I've gone ahead and marked a distance where I want them. One of them puts the beam right in front of the light that I was using in the past. And the other one is hidden, kind of tucked up behind this bulkhead that goes about four feet in front of the other one. Um, and all of these will be designed to hold lights, two on the front and then two on the back. So with my spot marked, I'm going to get out my drill. Do a quick pre-drill of one, that's roughly in the center. I'm going to come down a eighth of an inch to make it easier to drill. And I'm going to go into nothing. Alrighty, well that slightly changes things. I need to go find a couple anchors. I'm going to punch this hole in. I'm going to go find eight anchors. I'll be right back. Alright, we are back with some anchors. something there and I'm doing a great job with this from the beginning there's one This one is the actual wall, so I'm really hoping when they build these walls, there's a top plate. Why am I not surprised? This is going amazing. All right, with those two installed, you're going to get a rough distance. All right, from the edge of the circle is 88 inches. There is 48 inches. I am feeling especially clumsy today for some reason. 40 inches. I can see the top plate 
Why do I suck at getting up steps all of a sudden? I right, drill a hole. Ah, uh, yes. Wood. Alrighty. We are off to a bumpy start. Well, that was a bit of a bumpy start. It did not exactly go as I expected. I didn't expect that there was no top plate on this side of the room, but we got some anchors, we overcome, we got them in. I'm no longer on the ladder or stepping on sticky countertop from 3D resin. So just take a deep breath and move on to the next step which is installing the very poles that I bought. These are telescoping poles that adjust in height. Uh, typically when you're using one across like I'm doing, you'll have two vertical ones and then they'll clamp with some specialized clamps to the horizontal ones. But I don't have enough room for the vertical ones without getting in the way of a bunch of stuff that I already have set up. So I'm just putting the horizontal ones. Technically, the brackets that I installed, I don't need because these will press up against the wall directly to structure and be able to clamp. But as I just found out, where I'm clamping, there is no structure. So for safety, I put these brackets on in case something shifts, something moves, a little bit of who knows what happens. I'm not gonna overload these. I'm gonna follow the recommendations, which I think is 55 pounds for the entire distance. So we're not gonna exceed 55 pounds on any of these poles, but I don't trust the structure of my house. That's why I put up the brackets. Installing these is relatively easy. Pop them open, flip them around, Put it on one side, slide it out, put it on the other side, adjust. They do suggest a clamp tight from full distance. You just pull the arm out. But again, because I'm not comfortable with the structure in the basement, we're gonna back it out until that one's just on the edge. And we'll lock it in place. Can make it a little bit tighter. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm happy with that. As for the second one, which is going to be installed four feet closer to where you all, it is slightly longer than the maximum distance for one of the standard poles. I think this goes about 12 feet, four inches, or just under 12 feet, something like that. So you can buy an extension the other reason I wanted to use the brackets was because I was using an extension on one of these. I wanted there to be that little bit more structure. So the adapter the adapter goes on pretty easily and then it becomes completely unwieldy. Just pull the cup off, slide the extension in, slide the cup back on. Walk around your desk and we are good to go. And now we can start on the fun part of the project, which is hanging all of my lights. All of these lights I've owned for a couple of years now when I was making videos for a couple clients. The only stuff that I've bought new in this video is all of the impact very pole stuff. So along with the two poles, I've also bought the clamps that work with them. There's a little nub that sticks out the bottom of it. Drop it in your light. Tighten your light up. Clamp it onto the variable. The key light is a little bit different. We have a clamp that goes into a six inch extension to get away from the ceiling. And then that clamps into the light box. I might have to put some kind of spacer or a double support to keep it from rotating because this is so heavy. 
but for now, this will work. To help with the key light, I've got a big dome light that will go on the other side. And that leaves the last light, which is another accent light, similar to the first one we put on. The last step is to run all of the wiring down to the plug that's going to power all of these. That's going to be boring, so I'm going to spare you that. And I also need to find all of the Velcro ties before I can do that. So in a snap of a finger, we will be back with me at the studio to show you how the lights work. And like that, we are back at the desk. It is the next day and I just finished editing all of the footage you just watched. It was interesting editing that footage. I left it pretty raw. I cut out a lot of me just standing around, but kept in all of my frustration and just dealing with the situation as it was coming along. This basement was finished by an owner of the house and not by the company who constructed the house. There is no insulation behind these three walls. This is a wall that cuts the basement in half. So I could see on the other side of the drywall and I could see the top plate. But why there was nothing on this side, I don't know. I don't really care to understand. As far as the layout, I'm really happy with it. I hope this changes the way the videos look down here quite a bit. I actually still have the main lights on. I guess I could turn those off. Hey, Reese, turn off basement lights. So this is what just the studio lights look like. The last thing I did off camera was get a couple smart switches for all of this stuff. And I set up my home kit so that I can jump between the two. So the two commands are normal basement and basement studio. So if I'm done recording and I want to go back to the normal basement, I just say, hey, Reese, start normal basement. And it goes to the old lights. And then if I say, hey, Reese, start studio setup. It takes a second for the key light to come on. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Of course, I always enjoy you all coming along for the ride. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I really do enjoy reading them and writing back. But that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Chin scratches. Chin scratches.